All right, hope everybody's doing well. Just wanted to get a lot of stuff unpacked here. I got a lot of stuff going on here, so let's move this out of the way here. And the first thing I want to share with you is an autograph request that I got in here. And we hope everything is legit. You never know. Um, but this is from West Palm Beach, uh, Florida. For those people who don't know, this is a TTM autograph here from Tequesta, Florida. Uh, it said player on there, so what that means is Gary Player. And for the longest time, I did not not realize he would be able to sign a card, but he did, from what I understand here. He always signs sideways there, but very cool to finally get one of those. I, I, I thought he was the guy that was the one per, per life, per, you know, and he signed photograph, and that was it. So I don't know. I'm not really sure about that one there, but I finally got this one. It's probably between $50 and $75 on eBay, and that's what people charge for things. It's just absolutely crazy. So this will fit in my page here. Now, this is a little confusing here because this looks like it's almost a completed page. I have Bill Bruton, uh, Ben Cranshaw, Andrew McGee, uh, Harold Henning, Frank Beard, Arnold Palmer and Miller Barber and now Gary Player but see Tim Simpson is missing and he hasn't signed since 2018 or so so I don't know how to get that one but the Arnold Palmer is an auto pen or something so I'm not really sure if anybody has a legit Arnold Palmer maybe from the old days but it's gonna be really like hundreds of dollars to even find one like that so I'll never get this page done and Frank Beard is so faint there that he usually signs in a dead sharpie um, so I might see if I can find a better copy I think he's still alive but but I just want to make sure I get one before it becomes very expensive. And Harold Henning, I, I did not, he had passed away, but I had got him on eBay for like a dollar or two when you could get the deceased players for a couple bucks. You may not be able to see that there because it's in a very dark spot there because there was no light spots on this card there. But I'm glad I got that one when I did. Tim Simpson essentially would finish off the page there. So how neat is that one there? Then I sent off a postcard when I went off to the post office a few days ago, and I sent off, um, not this one here, but one of this size here. Now, why do you see, show two different postcards here? This is the size difference here. This is the one that cost me more money. It cost me a forever stamp to mail this particular postcard. I had put on something, and then I threw another stamp on there, and it was overposted, and I was like, oh, shoot, I've overposted it. But oh well. But it turns out I needed another 11 cents which I had a post stamp of 11 cents which made the card much nicer looking but anyway to make a long story short I was sending that off to Jay Underwood to thank him it was a very nice scene of uh, sun peeking through the clouds and I just covered up the part that said North Carolina with my return address and it just was a nice postcard unfortunately the post office being sticklers right now on sizing of postcards and unfortunately when the post off postage is going to go up it's going to be just so expensive for me to even so I basically have to stop my post to postcard project at the moment unless I can get free stamps somewhere and that's not likely going to happen so that one is there then I came across a photograph in my collection that was sitting in a picture frame for a long time autographed here and it on the back of it it's a historic images photograph there's the uh, stuff there. Now, historic images does not print the photograph. There's a misconception thinking historic images basically provides the images for you. Basically, what they do is they buy somebody else's archives that were already printed and then they resell them and that's all they do. But I like to remove their little advertisement here and so there's no harm, no foul. There's a little bit of, you know, extra residue there that I couldn't get off of there. November 3rd, 1992 is when this picture was, um, uh, printed pretty much Mr. Rogers drama shows and this was I'm um, sitting out um, in the open for a long time, Speedy Delivery, Mr. McFeely, 2019. Uh, that being said, it's got kind of a ghosting behind the uh, the picture, so the picture's got some pinking going around the autograph there, which is kind of unusual. But what's even crazier is that the image of the, the barcode that said historic images, it showed up right here and right here. Those are the previous stickers that used to be on there. It bled through there, even though I had removed the sticker years ago. That's crazy that it's damaging the photograph. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the reverse image of historic images with their barcode and everything. So that had been sitting on there for gosh, how many long years? I don't know. And then because the sticker was removed and it left a little bit of that whatever on there, um, that left a watermark on there on the photograph and damaged it. I've not been able to get Mayor Maggie. I, she signed it one time, but it's been at least a year since I've written to her. So who knows? 
but I've gotten everybody else more or less. I've got neighbor Aber. I've got I've got all the major people there, unless I'm missing somebody. Let me know who I might not have. Um, you wouldn't know that, but <clears throat> excuse me. So anyway, the other things I wanted to talk about here, that was the only piece of mail that uh, Gary Player, but it was a good piece of mail. I'm glad to have that. And that finished off my page, essentially, except for the Tim Simpson, who doesn't seem to be signing at the moment. I might be able to find one on eBay. But one of the things I've been doing is going through project stuff here, and I've been looking up um, ABC After School special project stuff, head of the class stuff, because I really enjoy that show. And I was looking up Obi-Wan. Let's look up Obi-Wan really quickly here. And what's crazy here is Obi-Wan um, is a Blu-ray um, set that I've been watching. Um, and very nice. Um, I, I'm not quite finished here. No spoiler alerts there. But um, it's alright. I mean, it's not you know, my favorite show by any means, but it's not the worst. Um, but I was looking up the Obi-Wan autographs here, and we've got Grant Feely as Luke Skywalker here. And um, I guess that would be a spoiler, I supposedly. Uh, 2023 Tops, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and somebody wants $100 for that one. But when you do a little further investigative research, that's one of the ones that first show up here. You do some investigative researches here, and you want to look up Grant Feely here. And there's one for $0.99 cents plus four thirty-six for shipping. It's got 14 hours left, so who knows where that will end up at. Then we've got another one here. Grant Feely, $2. No bids on it right now. And then we've got, um, let's see if we can find another one here. Keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. Keep going down, keep going down. And there should be some more of them right here. Um, there, there were when I looked, so I don't want to hold up your time here for this, this one autograph here. Make a long story short, $10.00. And three dollars and ninety-six cents for shipping, so you could get his autograph for fourteen dollars, not a hundred dollars. And that's a common theme that's going around the internet these days. There's things that are ten dollars, and there's things that are hundred dollars, and there's no rhyme or reason. I want to say that that person got really cheated on their box, and they're trying to get their money back out of the box, and that's why they put a hundred dollars on a ten-dollar autograph. Because some people might even think that you know putting a hundred dollars on something and something else is ten dollars they might think well gee somebody might accidentally click on it and buy it you know before you know it's all too late and buyer beware all that kind of who knows who in the heck even knows I had a bunch of other websites that were open earlier but I wanted to share with you this one here um, if I can get to it here this is Duffy Moon I think it's the something Cosmic Awareness of Duffy Moon. The awesome cosmic... I don't remember the exact... The Amazing Cosmic Awareness of Duffy Moon. Now I wanted to show you this here because this is an ABC After School special. This one didn't sell. This is actually a 16 millimeter film of Duffy Moon. Not that I'd be able to play that. I don't know how to run movies on my on my film projectors even if it works. And um, what, I was looking up a book here. There was a book that sold for seven plus dollars here. Oh, actually, actually, no. There's one that sold for two dollars and eighty-seven cents. But I can't get a consensus of the price here because this exact same book with this exact same cover right here sold, and then eBay had basically um, when I had looked at one, it said this long item is no longer in stock. So this one here sold for two dollars and eighty-seven cents. But there was one on eBay that um, sold for about seven dollars. Okay, not a big difference, you know, because there's price. So you know, four and that comes out to seven dollars. I think it might have been free shipping. But what got me is that it said we found something similar. Okay, so they showed me another listing of this exact same book for sixty plus dollars. Darn near seventy dollars for this exact same book. I'm like trying to figure out to myself why is eBay doing that to me? You know, they said we found something similar. It is not similar. I'm looking at something at seven dollars, and now I'm another. You know, he added a zero to it. He essentially added a zero. But then when I went to Abe Books and a Libris books, two big websites there. There's uh, copies of Duffy Moon for around $13, plus or minus shipping, somewhere in that particular range. But the ones that I first was able to see was a different copy, different photo variation, it's a different cover art or whatever. 
and they wanted something like $250 for those books. No rhyme or reason, and there was about five or six different copies of that book for 200 and some dollars. If I'm going to a thrift store, I'm not going to know the difference between a $2 book and a $200 book. Again, people are just adding zeros to everything. Again, is that book worth 200 to $250 or more? It really isn't. Uh, because somebody's going to go grab this $2.87 book because it's more or less the same, other than the cover art. But again, a kid's book with variant cover art, how much can you really add to that? You know, I understand maybe the $70 one, maybe, maybe. Even that's too much, you know, but I can't understand a $270 kid's book if I could even show you the cover. If I go back to Duffy Moon here and see if I can show you the cover of that one there. These are the completed listings here. And we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to the non completed listing and see if I can show you a copy of that one here. And we'll see if we can find a copy of that um, book here. And Amazing Cosmic Awareness. I'm not seeing it here. But again some of the other bookseller sites seem to have that. I get I get shown all kinds of things that have nothing to do with anything, which is very frustrating and annoying here. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of what to do about a few things here because people keep giving me offers on stuff when I don't have necessarily the financial means to buy it right now. And I'm like, oh crud, I'm saving money, but I'm not saving money because I want to say I've overspent, but I've got, you know, some bills that are coming due that are quite expensive and it's not really fun to uh, just buy a bunch of random stuff at the moment. So one of the things that I want to talk about very quickly, because I'm already at 12 minutes here, is how I'm going to be changing up my plan for the summer here for for autographs and cards and, and that sort of thing. So I've got three COMC orders that are locked in, in um, uh, for the, the duration. Um, one of them was something like a hundred th or the the one the one that's going to be the killer there's like four hundred and some thousand items ahead of my order so that's going to take an awfully long time to get and then one of the reasons that I, I CMC bothers me um, because of the time thing I have three orders there's another one of those two hundred some thousand orders away and there's another one that's like ninety thousand items away from being shipped you know in the meantime I have no cards to show or very few cards to show. I'll show you maybe one or two Star Wars cards here and there. And that's it. But then, with, with that being out of sight and out of mind, it makes me want to buy a bunch of more cards on eBay. And that's what happens to all of us. That's what happens to all of us. A bunch of cards get purchased on eBay. But so, um, and so other websites that sell cards that are ship a lot faster. You know, so we've got more cards on top of what we already have coming to us and you know so when we want to make content we have nothing to show I show you a Gary player and that could be a good video in all itself I could talk about him and how amazing golfer he was but you know uh, we have to have uh, some of us daily people have to have daily content for our, our channels I don't have access to packs that well and I don't want to spend the prices on the blaster boxes you know ne unnecessarily buying stuff and duplicating things I've had to get rid of a lot of duplication recently so in the meantime I'm you know taking my time with all my after school special project stuff head of class or whatever I have chose to to purchase there and um, I don't know what else I can really say, um, but again, you know, the pricing is just absolutely just through the roof on these things. Like I said, that Star Wars autograph, which I just showed you down here, the Obi-Wan one, that's $10, and you won't be able to see any of this here. And this one here is $100. What is so special about this one that makes it $100? It's a non-numbered autograph. It was a number, you know, crazy. Now here's one that's got four days left of it. I can almost assure you this Grand Inquisitor one is going to be cheaper than this $100. It might get up to $70. I don't know what giant, I don't know what the uh, uh, Grand Inquisitor is going to sell for. You know, um, this one's at 90 right now with a day left here. You know. Um, it's, uh, it says it's a collection here. I don't know about this one. I thought, uh, let's take a look at this one here. So there's a bunch of stuff here, it looks like. Really don't know. There's Baru and Owen. I, I, th I think Owen? I don't know. There's Baru, and who's this one? Foreman Groff Ditcher. He's not a, not a main character at all. So I don't know. And then you've got Reva um, as, um, as a Grand Inquisitor. I am not a big fan of 
this character here. I just dumb. I don't know. It it really didn't do anything for me. It really didn't. It just kind of, kind of got in the way there. But anyway, that bit aside here, let's go back to here. So there's the Duffy Moon here. So that's the after school special. That I'm just looking at different. Again, I don't know why Ben Affleck has shown off to me. Maybe he was in an after school special when he was a kid. But I don't trust anything. I mean, I'm not going to trust a COA of 8x10 of Ben Affleck. There's no way I'm going to buy that. They're going to show me a picture of somebody that's... Well, anyway, um, add some autograph signing, pretending to sign that exact same photograph. I have really no clue there, so not good there. Anyway, I thought I had some other information here, but it turns out I really don't here. But I just want to get a video out talking about... Oh, yeah, I want to just really t quickly touch on this. So, you know, cards are going to basically be falling by the wayside. I know I'm going to get in and it's a trap. I'm going to get sucked into a few more cards this summer, but that's not going to be the focus of it. The focus is getting back on track on some of these binder collections like the after-school binder and some of the head-of-the-class things like maybe photographs and stuff that I can throw in that binder. I don't have a separate binder for that, but maybe I've Eventually I will. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with my binder collection. Uh, I'm not going to be buying any of these books, like the Duffy Moon books, um, unless I can find one at a Goodwill store, uh, because I have absolutely zero room. I've been clearing out books and magazines, and no doing, no, nothing doing. I just don't have, I just don't have any reason to um, buy any more books because I have absolutely zero shelf space. And the biggest part of my collections this summer is probably trying to get myself some shelf space without having to buy any more shelves. If I buy more shelves, I'm going to have to keep them outside. There is absolutely no room for shelves anywhere here. In fact, I probably should get rid of two or three shelving units, um, but there's nothing I can do about it. I don't know what I'm going to do because I have a virtual uh, store. I, unless I know how to start learning how to start selling books online, I have uh, enough to open up a store of books. That's absolutely that how many books that I have in this place place here. So books are going to be not going to be part of the summer here if I can help it. So I'm at 17 minutes here. Um, let me know about anything um, that you're curious to have more follow-up on this video. Hope you enjoyed that. Best I can do, you know, but I can't really, you know, I can't really uh, um, think of anything else. And thank you for watching.